On the other side of the continent, in northern Nigeria, the colonial scene was very different. With no white settlers, life was peaceful. Things continued much as before. The British had conquered this huge region, far from the sea, for no real reason other than to keep it from the French. So the British were content with a supervision which allowed them to take a back seat. Under the direction of Lord Lugard, this was called indirect rule. This was the residence of the British official who governed the northern Nigerian province of Kano. Indirect rule meant ruling through local kings, in this case the local emir, who after defeat accepted British overlordship. On condition that nothing was done to modernize or democratize the conquered system, indirect rule was cheap and highly effective. Local kings and princes kept the peace and law and order in their own interest, as well as in that of the British. Both sides at the top had much to gain. So kings, like this one, the emir of Katsina, were able to stay in power and even add to their personal privileges. They were able to call on their own local retainers to govern the everyday affairs of the country. In this way, the native governing class, as the doctrine said, was to remain a real living force, as well as being a curious and interesting pageantry. The ceremonies are the same as a thousand years ago. There were kings in northern Nigeria when Richard Lionheart set out on crusade. Today, he and all the emirs of northern Nigeria play their part as subjects of the King of England. But their subjects still show their loyalty as in the days when Katsina was warring with her neighbors. Katsina still keeps her way of life, still resists new influences from the world outside. In short, no modernization of any kind, and therefore big problems for the future. I talked to Nigerian professor Obaro Ikeme. For the larger part of Nigeria, British rule did not mean anything for many years. In other words, uh, although at the centers of administration, there was a change which could be seen by the people and felt by the people. In the outlying areas, life went on as if the British did not exist. If you take Lugard's own particular area, the north, for example, the seat of the Emir and the seats of the district heads may have felt the immediate impact of the British presence. But the villages were ordered and run just as before, with one important difference though, taxation, that the people had to pay tax to a new power. The British built up a core of Africans who became known as native administrators, um, developed some commitment to the system. Uh, the uh, salaries were comfortable. They had power, uh, which they used to enrich themselves at the expense of their followers and their subjects. Consequently, the British were able to succeed um, largely by developing a core of people who became partners with them. British officers headed by a resident are there in every emirate to advise and assist the emir and his ministers in their day-to-day -day work. And each month, the resident presides at a full meeting with the emir's council. There may be word from Nigeria's governor in Lagos or from the colonial office in London or the council may discuss the repatriation of pilgrims from Mecca. The dignity of the past, the traditions of Katsina, are present in the council chamber. Here, once more, this time behind polite words, was the essence of colonial paternalism.